Hello, I am here on location in Gonzales, Louisiana, with Andrew of uh, Sugarfield Distillery to uh, talk about their stuff. Um, so, Andrew, first, who who are you, and how did you come to this strange occupation of distiller of fine spirits? Well, uh, I've been in hospitality my whole career. Bef prior to this, I was in uh, hotels, restaurants, bars. I uh, did that whole thing. Uh, my brother is the uh, is the chemistry expert. I am merely the hospitality guru. So, uh, so what, 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 why jump into this? Why, what, what, what gave you the bug? So uh, my brother originally got into this as a, uh, he was gonna go into wine originally, uh -huh. but uh, he felt like uh, spirits is such a better way to kind of get into spirit game get into the alcohol business itself okay and the distillery wasn't founded that long ago no uh, we, we, we opened in january of 2020. Ooh, nice uh, nice uneventful year to be right, founded right we we went into distribution in uh uh march of 2020 right when uh you know the pandemic right the brick yeah, wall yeah, everything kind of quarantine came down uh but uh it did give us a chance to really uh uh Get all of our T's crossed and our I's dotted and mm -hmm. get rocking and rolling. Okay, we're doing some direct cinema stuff here okay. with people rolling into the, the distillery bar. Yeah, we're, um, we're so, a live venue okay. here. So yeah. can I ask a very mean and cruel question? Sure, I love um, this. So, uh, you know, we're now like at least two decades into the current kind of craft distillery boom. Right. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm being a mean, cynical consumer, sure. I could or distributor or whatever, I could say, you know, why why a distillery in Gonzales, Louisiana, like it, it, in 2020? Like, sure. what do you guys bring to the game that's new and why should I care? Well, that is uh, a great question. Part of our values here as well. Uh, the, the answer to that question is this. Uh, Louisiana is really lacking in great distilleries in this state. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. The largest one is, uh, it's in Lacassine, it's called Bayou, and... Uh, it's been around forever. Yeah, they've been Long around day. for a while. Uh, they're, they're not super crafty. They, we, we felt like there was a, a way for us to kind of come in and do our take on it. Also, uh, one great thing about this state is it's a state full of flavors and uh, uh, tradition, and uh, that's what we kind of try to capture. Also, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but most of the sugar cane in the world comes from this area. So, uh, okay, like, so you got you have a cane industry here. Yeah. Uh, which is just tell me more about your twist in sure. particular. Like, sure. So, uh, so our twist is what we do. Uh, we uh, we approach rum like our aged rum and our unaged rums. Mm -hmm. We approach those the same way we approach whiskey, where you know we do unaltered. Uh, just kind of uh, the uh, the age rum. This is straight from the barrel. We're not adding any sugar to it. We're not adding any coloring to it. Nothing like that. Uh, uh, and uh, I brought a couple of liqueurs with me too. You just you told me to grab some interesting stuff. So uh, I really did that. Uh, and uh, uh, I can talk about those a little bit. Uh, so like uh, yeah, like where where are you getting the ingredients for for all this stuff? So uh, I think that's very important. Uh, so uh, we were, I was having a conversation earlier this week, uh, we were talking about quality versus location of where you get stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we were talking about, it's this great local restaurant, uh, it's called Solu, South, Southern Louisiana, it's, it's a compression of that. And what they, were ta what they talked about was, we try to use local ingredients as much as possible. And I said, yeah, they're usually the best ingredients. Not always. And when they're not, especially that's when, we when, go... when you're talking about cane juice, right? Like you cannot track, you know, ship that stuff across the country no, to make, sure you know, uh, from Louisiana to I don't know Cali yep. to make, you know. Um, so you know, basically, if you if you want to make some something like a cane juice based rum, you got to kind of do it on location, right? Does, yeah, does that sound yeah. Good? Like literally, we uh, these two are. Uh, uh, I guess if you're if you're listening to this, uh, mm -hmm. I have two two rums in front of me that me and my brother made uh, last year. Uh, we literally went to the cane fields and hand cut the cane. 
Uh, we have a sugarcane press here. Uh, it's a three-roll press that uh, we got from Vietnam, and uh, uh, it takes whole stalks of cane. Now, unfortunately, all of the machinery that uh, they currently use chops them into billets, which are small, uh, small pieces of the cane. And that's what they use in the large sugar refineries. Here, we have to have the full stalks or they'll get just clogged up in our, uh, in our machines. Right. So, okay, so you're not just, you're not just going to the, to the local farmers and saying, hey, can we buy some of your, right. cane, your cane juice and then ship it over here to make booze out of it. You're, you're buying like cut stalks themselves, whole stalks of cane. We're literally cutting them ourselves. Yeah. Me and my brother are hand cutting the cane and uh, bringing it here and juicing it. Now, with, when you're making this style of rum, uh, you have a week after you cut the cane to juice it or it's going to dry out yeah. and you won't get any juice out of it. After you juice it, you have about four hours before it starts to ferment from the from the uh, yeast that's already naturally in the cane. Okay. So if you don't put your yeast in it within four hours, this other yeast will take over and it'll spoil. So uh, it's okay. a race against time. Go ahead. Okay. So so with your standard rub, the, uh, this one, right? This is a uh, molasses based. Yeah. So Are you, and you're getting it from um, I guess some of the local mills. Yeah. So uh, molasses, it all comes from one mill. It's okay. a mill in. Uh, Right across the river, it's in Bell Rose. It's a mill called Lula Sugar Refinery. Uh, it's an awesome mill. We've, we're really working on our relationship with those guys as well. Get all our sugar and molasses from there. This is a combination of uh, uh, eight barrels of 90% sugar, 10% mm -hmm. molasses, and one barrel of 100% molasses. Okay, so we're blending molasses-based rum with, with sugar-based rum. Yep. Um, uh, but in any case, like they're they're down the road. You can, uh -huh. you, can you know these people. Yeah, we literally um, pick it up ourselves. As, but you know, this stuff is kind of next level up of or down of of closeness to the of of cane to grass, if I can yeah. if I can say yeah. that. Um, and these and so these are from the same field. Is that right? That's right. Um, so uh, let me tell you the story. Oh, yeah. So while so we were is, out while we were out cutting these, uh, well. Uh, it, it was in. It's in a field. Uh, my brother. Uh, he's a. He's a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. He. Uh, he actually helped deliver the baby of the cane farmer who owns these fields. Now these fields are twenty five thousand acre fields. So it's huge fields. It actually covers multiple parishes. And while we were out there cutting it, uh, day number one, we were out there. Mm -hmm. uh, what? nerds talk about spirit nerds talk about while they're doing things is terroir terroir like, yeah so we, we were talking about the dirt and it's because the dirt in the first field we were in was red we were like where that who, who knew there was clay dirt yep. in in southern louisiana like what is this the next day the dirt was black we started looking at a couple things realized we were in another parish so we named these, uh, one's Ascension Parish and one's Assumption Parish. Mm -hmm. uh, they're super interesting. Uh, everything about these rums is exactly the same. So uh, sa same yeast, same distillation, yep. same distillers. Same, um, same period of time when mm -hmm. it was cut, same type of... All, all that's uh, different is yep. the, the place. Yep. Um, the dirt, the, the dirt the that dirt. it came from. And I, so I, I tried these last year. I should be begging you for like little... Absolutely, I should have brought. But, uh, um, the thing is, in in spirits, we throw around terms like terroir a lot. Um, not necessarily even with like you know Waterford, Brooklady, those characters, but like um, just you know, folks making whiskey in, in in the craft distillery, they will talk about sourcing from local farms and stuff, and and terroir, and it can be hard to get what the what the deal is because it's it just smells like whatever it smells like. But you have these two side by side, and you can tell the difference, right? Right? Oh, yeah. Andrew's running off to get glasses. Um, and it's so it's so it's like if I can be a wine nerd for a second, it's like um, nosing a Volnay versus a Pomar. Like, like they're right. They're they're both in the same place in Burgundy. They're right next to each other. Same grape. Um, probably, you know, you could do the same producer even, but. 
like they just have completely different characters and ways of delivering. So this one on my right is the... So yeah, these are, uh, you have batch five in your left and uh, batch six in your right. So this is uh, assumption and, uh, no, ascension and assumption. Ascension. So, assumption. You can, I mean, you can, there's a kinship there. There's a kind of... Absolutely. Like on the, on the uh, uh, ascension, there's a kind of like fruit bubblegum thing is that, but, but it's very mineral as well. Yeah. Um, not like traditional rocks, it's more like, yeah. yeah, red clay or something. Both these bottled at 46%, um, yep. right? Same proof. Not, um, not filtered, uh, or not chill filtered at least? No chill filtering. Uh, we do filter them uh, slightly. We, we run them through a just mesh filter to, you know, get any long, uh, kind of bitter, but nice finish on, like, yeah. uh, oriental tobacco smoke, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm tasting, noting right now when I should be interviewing. <laughs> You're fine. I love this. I man. will say the, the Assumption was my favorite of the two. Um, it was actually one of my, my favorite American rum that I tried last year. Oh, God, that's good. Um, yeah, that's so good, isn't it? Well, uh, th there's another little trick that I, that I like to do. Uh, I introduce people, particularly people that are big into rum. Yep. I say, uh, w what we didn't do was we didn't do the blend of these two together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really like that, so uh, if you'd like, just kind of sure. pour them together. So you can, you can buy both bottles yep. and uh, <laughs> do your own... Um, well, we felt like they were... Classification? Yeah, yeah. Sir, we, we felt that they were uh, very interesting uh, apart. Uh, but we feel like they're really nice together, too. Yeah, and the, th and the thing is, in, at least in American rum, um, you see this in, in Martinique. You can see people doing yep. single varietal, uh -huh. um, even small plot um, kinds of, of bottlings and expressions um, uh, or other, other places in the world. But... In American rum, this this is new to me. I, I've never yeah. seen anyone doing this kind of very very sort of terroir expressive kind of bottling, and it's super cool. Yeah, thank you. We uh, I mean we want to we like to be kind of on the cutting edge. Uh, we don't want to just be another boring rum distillery that's doing you know like here's our spice rum, here's our aged rum. That's here's fine, our... right? I mean that's hey hey. It's, There's room for everything. It's just, we wanted to do things just a little differently, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have access to this, and uh, we think this is so interesting. We also come from kind of a wine background where we both are huge into wine. Me and my brother both are huge into wine, and uh, uh, we approach kind of he, – he approaches spirits from the wine side, mm -hmm. and I approach spirits really more from the culinary side. Right. And uh, uh, it's a, just unique ways you can kind of – I mean, you, look at different you can have food with these. Oh, um, yeah. We've we done uh, different spirit, like, uh, dinners, kind of like wine dinners, mm -hmm. but with spirits rather than wine. It's yeah. a real good challenge for a chef to see if he can uh, pair something with a strawberry liqueur or something. They love it, man, let me tell you. Yeah, no, it's they're just, always using wine, and you give them a yeah. shot with some... With, yeah, I, we should be talking more about... With, well, maybe I should, I should ask you... Um, uh, uh, so I have I have a couple a bunch more questions to ask. I could I could ask sure. you about about like the your because you have like this really extensive range at this point. What are you um, what are you excited about that's sort of coming up that we haven't seen yet? Um, I did, you just gave me a tour and you mentioned some yeah. Things uh, going on. So I talked about some of the things we're doing. Uh, I, one thing I really didn't dip, dip into too much is we've got a, a a finishing barrel series that we have coming out. That's really interesting, and uh, this is where we're going to have uh, uh, whiskeys finished in different types of barrels. Mm -hmm. So we've got some port barrels. The first one coming out is going to be some rye and port barrels, and uh, I believe the way the way we're talking about it right now is we're going to split the barrels up and uh, do a blend, mm -hmm. and then do single do half of the barrel blended, and then half the barrel single barrel. Mm -hmm. So we'll have it'll be three different expressions of this of these two barrels. It'll be each side by side, and then the blend, which is kind of what we just did with mm -hmm. that, where uh, 
Uh, very yeah, uh, we, uh, we we just me and my brother go back and forth on you know what we want to do, and uh, I, I always tell tell Thomas that we make the rules here. Like, there's nobody telling us what we what we can do. We can we can do single barrels. We can do blends. We can. I mean, that's our. Is something, when you, when and, uh, you're when you're like a brand new distillery, you you are rewarded for something coming out with something distinctive that mm -hmm. people can people. Idiots like me on the internet can talk about and say, "Hey, this is something I haven't seen before." Um, it's it's why I don't know if you agree with this, but I I, I there's a there's a common sentiment about you know support your local distillery and stuff. Uh -huh. and I I'm much more like no just drink new things that are like different and cool and, and fun yeah and uh, um and this is this is doing a lot of what you're doing is is, is doing that yeah so um you're doing your your finishes. Any rum stuff? Any wine stuff going on? Uh, yeah, we're uh, well. That's the big thing. We have a winery and cidery and wow. brewery right across the street. You can see it. It's the building right there. Uh, that's coming up in the next couple of months. We've got all our licenses now, and uh, now it's just a process of obtaining the wine. And uh, uh, as you probably know, uh, Southeast Louisiana is not uh, excellent for growing wine grapes. It's tricky. Yep, yep. Particularly the wine grapes that we like. So. Uh, we're just going to be kind of negotiating style, sourcing some But, you know, wine. you can make pomace brandy, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. Make some, some southern Louisiana uh, mar or something. Yeah, we're, defi that. we're definitely going to be doing some brandies and uh, uh, cider. We're really excited That's about it. the cider as well. Uh, we, we actually have an apple farm in uh, northern Mississippi, uh, and uh, we've got over a 1,000 apple trees planted on that, and uh, they'll be mature... In the next three or four years. Okay, so you're play, you're playing the long game here. Yeah, this is, that's that's great. Um, oh, other 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 questions. Um, what are what's some stuff you've had that you don't make that you've been impressed by recently? Like a couple of a couple of things. Uh, you know. So I, people ask me what I drink when I don't drink, you know, my own stuff, and uh, I am constantly drinking other people's stuff. I'm looking for inspiration anywhere I can go. Uh, I'm big into gin. Uh, I think gin is such an interesting spirit. Uh, uh, Rum-wise, I love Foursquare and Mount... I love the Barbados rum. Uh, yeah, Claren is one of my favorites. Uh, I have this little tiki bar right down the street from my house that I hit up a lot. And uh, they get sick of me there because I keep saying... Got a new bottle you got there? Let me let me hit that. But uh, but but they, but they know me at this point. They, they know what the they know what the deal is. Right. They know what the, the fun is. Yeah. Right. Uh, and lastly, what do you? Okay, so you you now have me and uh, an audience of dozens of international booze <laughs> nerds watching. Um, a lot of European folks. Oh, what yeah. what if if you were to ask us anything? If you were to to plumb us for information. What do you What do you want to know? What should we be telling you that would be helpful? Sure. So, uh, and by the way, if you're watching this, yeah. post the answer to what he's about to Absolutely. ask down below. Like I really like that's that's one of the things that I constantly am talking about. One of the things that we really focus on here is local flavors and local local things, uh, and introducing people to these local flavors. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we have uh, like our honey liqueur. I talk about this a good bit. Uh, when it when you talk about a local honey, people usually ask you know where the honey comes from. This honey is literally from behind the wall right there. <laughs> that is my daughter. Yeah. Okay. So, so but uh, yeah. So using your local products, that's one thing that we really focus on. But uh, like in the future, uh, we kind of want to like my question would be uh, my question. To answer your question is, uh, you know, where do we go next? I mean, we're so all over the place. We we almost want to kind of focus a little bit and figure out where. That's not a lot of fun. That's not the fun or sexy question, but uh, or sexy. Okay, sexy so question. where where to go next and what to focus on? Yeah. Okay, I think I think those are. I mean, I'm I'm a cane juice rum nerd, so I, I have too, man. I have my point of passion, but. Uh, uh, you, you, uh, you watching this? Please tell Andrew what they should what they should be doing. 
down below. Yeah. Um, Andrew, I, I'm going to cut it off here because I've taken too much of your time and my, my wife's time uh, already. She is babysitting while I, while I do this. <laughs> um, uh, so th thank you so much. And um, yeah, this is, this is great. I will be buying bottles of these at least. And um, an absolute pleasure, sir. All right. Thank you.